Hello and welcome to this module on bacterial genomics. Today we'll be studying about the analysis of bacterial genomic data using information technology. I will guide you through the step-by-step -step process of analysis of bacterial genomic data. The objectives of this module are to introduce you to the concept of bacterial genome sequencing and experimental design, to introduce you to the concept of bacterial genome assembly and annotation pipeline and to transfer analytical skills pertaining to the interpretation of bacterial genomic data. The learning outcomes of this module are as follows. Upon completion of this module, you should be able to design an experiment to sequence the genome of a bacterium, design and describe the pipeline involved in genome assembly, annotation, and comparative genomics, analysis of genomic features in terms of their biological context, Content of this module focuses on the bacterial genome organization, experimental design of the genome sequencing projects, library preparation, processing genome sequence data, analysis using specific tools, rapid annotation using subsystem technology, and validation of assembly. Now, when we look at the bacterial genome, we consider it in terms of the organization. Some bacteria consist of a single circular chromosome or the genomic DNA. The se second type of bacteria may consist of a circular chromosome as well as one or more plasmids. Some bacteria may contain linear chromosomes. Now this prior information is essential when we move on to genome assembly because when we assemble the genome, if we obtain a single contact, we can assume that the bacterium has a single circular chromosome. If we assume if we obtain more than one contig, this may be the result of misassembly or if experimental evidence proves otherwise, it may be indicated that the bacteria contains more than one chromosome in the form of a plasmid or a linear chromosome. The first aspect which needs to be considered is the identity of the bacterium. This is because the identity will assist you in the identification of the bacterium as well as a reference genome if available at the NCBI genome database. Ribosomal RNAs are a tool for the validation of sequence integrity. Generally, a PCR or a polymerase chain reaction of the 16S ribosomal RNA followed by sequencing and the basic local alignment search tool or ribotyping tool will facilitate the identification of the bacterium at the species and the genus level. This is an essential first step in order to identify the bacterium which you intend to sequence. When we consider an experiment, we have to look at specifics of why we intend carrying out this bacterial genome sequencing. For instance, some researchers may be interested in specific genes associated with pathways. And if all genes are present in association with a particular pathway, it may mean or imply that this pathway is present in that particular bacterium. This is very important when it comes down to genetic engineering because some research projects may focus on the transfer of genes from one bacterial species into another host and obtaining insight into the genes associated with pathways is essential to this process. The second aspect is enzymes. Some experimental approaches may focus on the discovery of new enzymes and genome sequencing and provide a window into the enzyme characteristics of specific bacteria. Phenotypic screening can be conducted as a prelude to genome sequencing in order to identify specific enzymes. Other genomic features which researchers may be interested in may include genomic islands such as those associated with pathogenicity, secretion systems, also associated with infectious cycles, CRISPRs, which may be good for genotyping of bacterial strains, and 
recombination sites within the genome to identify horizontal gene transfer events. So let's look at experimental design, which is essential to ensuring what is known as genome completeness, to obtaining a good genome sequence. So when we look at a bacterial genome, the approximate size is 4.5 megabases in general. However, this may be more or less, may range from 3 megabases to up to 8 or 9 megabases, depending on the strain. In this case of this, for this particular topic, we are going to use the sequencing platform, which is the Illumina HiSec paired in 150. And we'll compute the number of reads, which will be required to obtain a genome coverage of 150 times or 150 X. So when we do this kind of experimental design, not all reads may achieve what is known as a Q30 or high quality required for assembly. This is why when we, for instance, if I have a 4.5 megabase genome and I use a high sec E150 system for sequencing, I have to multiply this number by 150 and obtain the total data output which is required. Once this data output is obtained, we assume that 20% of the reads will not reach the Q30 and we deduct this from the total data output in which case we may have to upgrade this to around 160 to 170 X. This is the general approach which researchers undertake for genome sequencing experiments. Okay, so now we move on to library prep and library preparation or library prep is depends on the type of sequencing system which you use. So the basic steps are first is DNA quality control in which you ensure that your DNA has sufficient concentration as well as purity. The second step involves DNA shearing, which is dependent on the specific library kit. The third step involves like adapter ligation to the sheared DNA sequences. Adapters are generally provided with the Illumina kit. The next step is library quality control. And finally, the libraries are loaded onto the sequencer for sequencing. So upon completion of your genome sequencing experiment, the sequencer will deliver data. We now move on to the bioinformatics aspect of genome sequencing, which is genome assembly and annotation. This is the process associated with genome data. So the first thing what you do is you filter the raw reads and eliminate reads which do not meet the quality score. You then move on to Trimomatic to trim off the adapters. Then you can proceed to assembly using Celera Velvet or any of the assemblers provided with that particular sequencing system. The next step involves scanning for ORFs or open reading frames and coding regions to identify genes and genetic pathways. We can validate the completeness of the genome sequencing based on the RNA scanning. RNA scanning basically identifies the number of TRNA and uh, RNAs. Uh, researchers may want to proceed to similarity searches and comparative genomics. So two genomes can be compared using the basic local alignment search tool or blast to go or any of the comparative genomics tools to identify similarities between genomes. Special features in the genome can be identified using RAST or rapid annotation using subsystem technology. CRISPR finder to identify CRISPR elements, anti-SMASH to identify antibiotic resistance clusters, and the KEG or the Kyoto Encyclopedia of Genes and Genomes to identify specific pathways. The analysis of data is driven by several questions such as what do you want to discover? Do you intend to apply the data to corroborate phenotypical characteristics. For instance, you have identified a, a, a bacterium which produces cellulase, and you want to identify whether this genes encoding cellulase are encoded in the genome. So this is what, me, what it means by corroboration. Some research experiments may involve discovery of novel genes, pathways, or biological phenomena. Some may involve understanding the basis for pathogenesis